there's a big muscle over here called the Tismus dorsi. Uh, there's normally, normally a few tricks we employ to identify that, but I'm going to go through the process. I'm just going to get you to gently roll back towards me. That's perfect. So I'm intentionally uh, got him positioned on the side because I think the serratus plane block is probably easiest performed in this position. I know a lot of my Australian colleagues who work in trauma centers um, would say they like to having the patient supine and injecting from this way, but as a general, I find it easier to do this. So I'm going to have it orientated to the left-hand side of the screen is posterior, the right-hand side of the screen is anterior. I'm going to slide posteriorly, and as I slide posteriorly, I want to go through that process. I want you to appreciate that all I've done is literally place the probe uh, on the side of here, and I'm sliding up and down. And I'm doing that intentionally to show off two muscle layers here, and you can see how the fibers of the, the muscle are going in different directions. So the superficial muscle is latissimus dorsi, and as I slide back, becomes nice and thick, and I go up, you can see a really nice muscle. And as I go anterior, that muscle fades down to a nice sliver. So this is as, as beautiful as it gets over here. Um, and that correlates with where you see latissimus dorsi ending. So you can correlate your ultrasound anatomy with real anatomy, which is often not the way. Um, so we've got a very small level of adipose. We've got LD on the top, serratus below that, and right below that, and I've intentionally just placed my probe in a transverse orientation, you've got ribs. And then deep to the ribs, you've got the pleura. So this is kind of the setup I like to have. I'm going to do a serratus plane block. This has got indications for breast surgery. And of course, if you do a serratus plane block in isolation, you won't take out the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. So if that's key to your analgesic strategy, bear that in mind. Um, but the biggest indication for this, and I think it's biggest utility, um, potential for thoracic surgery, but rib fractures. And I think this is an area where uh, if you're providing a trauma service, an out, of, an out of hour service for analgesia for patients with rib fractures, I think this is great, except in one indication. And that's when they've got surgical emphysema. Because if they've got surgical emphysema, then you're effectively wasting your time in my practice. So what do we do? So what's the process? So I place the probe uh, on the patient. I want to identify a thick uh, muscle that's, super, that's right superficial. That's LD. I want to see the anterior aspect of it. And you can see it petering out. And, that's, uh, and then the, the muscle you're seeing there is serratus anterior. So I like to identify that plane. And my sole purpose is to open up that plane between serratus anterior uh, and uh, between latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior. There is a structure that lies in that plane. And if I scan up and down, and hopefully we'll see it. So you're going to look for the thoracodorsal artery, uh, which we've got right in the center of the screen over there. So it is a vascular plane. So the idea is not to inject the, your local anesthetic into it, but also it looks like the thoracodorsal nerve is lying right next to it. So I don't know how clearly that, can, that uh, projects over there. There we go. So we've got a nice big thoracodorsal artery with the nerve next to it. So for a serratus plane block, um, I think the main purpose is to open up that plane and hydrodissect um, your local anesthetic in that path between the two muscles. The other approach for serratus plane blocks, and you'll certainly see a lot of the emergency physicians do it, is to inject below serratus. So if you just drop that pointer down, uh, let's see, right, so there's a rib. Right, so a lot of the emergency physicians will find a nice plane. I'm just rotating the probe, so I'm scanning along the long axis of the rib, and they will aim to inject local anesthetic in that plane just below serratus on top of the rib. For me, I don't like anything that has the potential to take me in close proximity to that structure, uh, which is the pleura. So now you've got a position here where you've got serratus lying directly on top of the pleura. So if, I, if given a choice, I would rather stick my local anesthetic, I'm gonna just wanna rotate around, I'd rather stick my local anesthetic above the serratus muscle. It's a nice place to thread a catheter. You can open out really beautifully. Um, and for breast surgery, if it's really important, if I can't do a central neuroaxial block, but I want to do something that's going to really get the lateral cutaneous branches, I would rather attack the serratus plane laterally. Because if you've got it positioned in the, pec, uh, in the PEC 2 position, you're aiming to bring a needle down over here and visualizing an anterior slip of serratus. If I go around that serratus, and we keep going around, you can see how serratus is just coming to an end there. So when you're around there, you don't always get a beautiful slip of serratus.